Welcome into the Wednesday edition of Supernatural News here on Darkness Radio. I'm Tim Dennis, your host, and with me on this edition of Supernatural News is Beer City Bruiser. Hey, Bruiser, how you doing? Hello, Tim. I'm doing fantastic. Very excited to discuss what we got on the uh, paranormal realm of things. Oh boy, do we have do we have an exciting week? Not only an exciting week, but we've got uh, some strange and bizarre stories this week. Uh, you know what? Uh, I would say let's just jump into it. But uh, well, let's just jump into it. You know what? <laughs> this is uh, this is beyond bizarre. Um, we're going to start off right away by saying, you know what, if if I screwed up at my job or you screwed up at your job uh, with the whole under underwater needle pointing as much as uh, as this Catholic priest did, um, we'd all be in a bunch of trouble. OK, I'm curious as to what he did. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's just put it this way. Um, when you go to somebody to get rid of the devil in, in you, uh, you you want him to get rid of the devil, right? Oh, yeah, I'm coming to you for a specific reason. Please get rid of this devil. <laughs> sure, right. Uh, you know, you've got the devil in you, and you say, hey, I need an exorcism. And the, and the priest goes, hey, y- you know what? I need to get rid of the devil in you. And he goes, uh, you know, he takes a little shaker full of uh, holy water, and he goes, and a one, and a two, and a three. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's gone, right? It, it, I guess if that's, the, what is that? Is that when you order an exorcism on Wish? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because evidently that's where he got his exorcism degree. A uh, Catholic priest in Arizona resigned after discovering he'd incorrectly performed thousands of baptisms for baptisms, baptisms for over. I guess it wasn't exorcisms. It was baptisms for over 20 years. I guess I need to go back and get my broadcasting degree. Uh, A priest in Arizona performed thousands of baptisms incorrectly by erroneously changing one word. Oh, so they had to be exorcisms at the end. (laughs) Yeah, because if you're not baptized, you're just susceptible, I don't know. Susceptible? There you go. Yeah. To the the devil coming in you. Yeah. Pardon me. (laughs) Whoa. Hey. I don't don't know where you've been hanging out lately. Um, The uh, error rendered thousands of baptisms performed by the Reverend Andres Arango uh, invalid. Uh, No priest may add, remove, or change anything in the liturgy on his own authority, according to the diocese. A Catholic priest in Phoenix has resigned after realizing he'd been incorrectly performing baptisms for over 20 years, rendering the rite invalid for thousands of people. As he administered the ritual, the Reverend Andre uh, Arango would say, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, but the correct wording is, I baptize you. Oh, so got a little bit of the um, spell check going on there. Yeah, so someone hand him the wrong copy. <laughs> he put it. He put it in the plural because evidently yep. he felt he was feeling like we, like the whole spirit of the church, like you know, yep. we as a family. And evidently it's I. So you know, it's it's a whole you know, me, not we. So can he blame his secretary? Because like, think about it. if you're doing if you're doing <laughs> copy for like radio ads and stuff, and, the, and it's a misspelling in the radio ad, you can blame your secretary. Can he blame his secretary? Uh, maybe actually they, <laughs> in 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 bigger radio stations it's a copywriter you hey, look co- at that yeah you blame look the copywriter and the catholic church is a pretty big thing so maybe they have copywriters too <laughs> i don't know uh so uh no one including priests may add remove or change anything in the litur- liturgy on his own authority olmstead wrote citing vatican teachings olmstead added that he didn't believe arango had intentions to harm the faithful or deprive them of the grace of baptism and the sacraments. Still, the official Diocese of Phoenix website said that Arango's one-word alteration means that all baptisms he has performed until June 17th of 2021 are presumed invalid. (laughs) Oh, no. So they have to go back. You can just go back and do it over. Yeah, go back and get your Duncan. (laughs) Exactly. That's right. Uh, The diocese also... Not from him. Not from him. No, no, no. He has a, he has a plural problem. Uh, the diocese also called for those who believe Arango had incorrectly baptized them to submit their contact details uh, to receive the proper right. In an open letter, Arango apologized for his error and announced that he'd resigned as pastor for the St. Gregory Parish of in Phoenix as of February 1st. Really? It, it was that bad that he had to... He had to back we got out? To think 20 years. That's a lot of baptisms. 
Yeah, yeah. If you do it uh, every Saturday and or Sunday, depending on yeah. the, the parish weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a you lot. Know, yeah, Phoenix is a growing city in the last twenty years. Yeah, I, that's a, I can see the resignation trying to save. Plus, you probably don't want to deal with the, the backlash. Ooh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he said it saddens me to learn that I've performed invalid baptisms throughout my ministry as a priest by regularly using an incorrect formula. Uh, I don't know. That it's a formula. It's not a scientific thing. You know? <laughs> no, it's not. It's just a passage. <laughs> you're, you're Arango, not Einstein. Uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit and in communion with the Diocese of Phoenix, I will dedicate my energy and full time ministry to help remedy this and heal those affected. It's an it's an I, not a we. It's it's not H two O. Well, it is H two O. You're blessing that. Uh, according to the Catholic News Service, Arango previously served in the parishes in Brazil and San Diego. Uh, well, it could have been a it could have been a English Spanish transition or it know, been, translation yeah. deal. Um, the but, diet, but Phoenix, Arizona's pretty close. There's Phoenix. They're Spanish speaking in Phoenix. So true. See, yeah. so. He, he, uh, I said, see, and that's yeah. yes. Um, <laughs> you agreed with see, me. See, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a translation <laughs> thing. So yeah. I don't. Th- I think we had to lighten up on uh, uh, Pastor Arango, uh, or priest, or Father Arango, rather. Uh, there is no Reverend. Uh, th- this, this actually, this, this article is wrong. There's no Reverend in a Catholic church. It's a no, father. A it's, yeah, yeah, it's a priest. priest. Uh, Catholic baptisms involve water being poured on a person's head to signify that they've been purified and are now part of the church. Baptisms are, are t- typically performed on infants and are considered a requirement for Catholic salvation. Um, so, yeah, it uh, you know, just give the guy a break. He just, pl- yeah. he just, you know, he purified the thing. It's no big deal. He was just being... You know, all encompassing. That's right. Everybody's involved. Everybody. Everybody gets in on the deal. Um, Speaking of, if you were one of those that got a a we instead of an I over there in Phoenix, it's time to burn your Harry Potter and Twilight books because you now may have a demon. (laughs) The Twilight books are terrible, but I don't know if they're the possessive kind <laughs> or possessive intense at least you yes know, yeah you never know this according to uh, pastor greg Locke, um uh, during a live streamed event last week a controversial tennessee pastor burned tens of fantasy books tens Bruce tens are, of them tens of them <laughs> it was a small bonfire uh including harry potter and twilight in an alleged attempt to fight demonic influences pastor greg Locke of the global vision bible church in mount juliet uh near nashville began his sermon last wednesday by telling his congregation that he had received a missive from god to skip holy communion because we weren't hungry anyways and instead <laughs> organize a good old-fashioned book burning uh, because it's winter and we all need to stay warm. Uh, the event, which was live streamed on Facebook, was organized to denounce witchcraft and involve dozens of copies of book like books like Harry Potter and uh, Twilight, as well as other dangerous objects that Locke claimed symbolized witchcraft. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I want to know what those other symbols were. Was it like remember those Digimon things you had? And- Oh. Back in the nineties, where you had to raise it and feed it, and had to go to the bathroom, like that could have possessed you. <laughs> yeah, that could have. That that probably needed a good burning too. Yeah. Uh, he said, "Stop allowing demonic influences into your home." Locke wrote in a since deleted Facebook post, probably for a good reason. Uh, bring all your Harry Potter stuff. He said, "Laugh all you want, haters. I don't care. It's witchcraft, a hundred percent." I can see why he deleted this. Uh, all your Twilight books and movies. That mess is full of spells, demonism, shape shifting, and occultism. We will be in your continued series on deliverance from demons. We have stuff coming in from all over that will be burned. Uh, we're not playing games. Seems like we are here. Uh, (laughs) Witchcraft and accursed things must go, the Tennessee pastor added. I ain't messing with witches no more. I ain't messing with witchcraft. I ain't messing with demons. I'll call all of them out in the name of Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of grammatical stuff going on in the religious world today, isn't there? (laughs) Yeah, there is. Yeah, I I kind of... (laughs) I ain't messing with this. I ain't messing with that. Uh, During the controversial event, Locke also 
invited participants to burn tarot cards, Ouija boards, healing crystals, idol statues, spell books, and everything else tied to the occult. He's such a nice guy. He uh, is. And I like how he called for everyone to bring stuff, and they only brought tens of books. So basically yeah. someone went and bought a series of Harry Potter, a series of Twilight, and threw it in the fire. Yeah, yeah. And potato salad. Bring potato salad with raisins. <laughs> that needs to be burned up, too. Yes. Um, also assuring people that his church has a burn permit. Well, good. He, he put, <laughs> good. He's, following, he's, he's following the law. Good for he, him. He put safety first. Yeah. Uh, and adding that even without without one, a church has a religious right to burn occultic materials that they deem are a threat to their religious rights and freedoms and belief systems. Okay. Yep. Uh, Tyler Salinas, a photographer present near the bonfire on the night, uh, there was... That doesn't make sense. Uh, Tyler Salinas, a photographer present near the bonfire on the night. There was one counter protester who held up copies of Fahrenheit 451. (laughs) (laughs) Evidently, he was gauging the temperature of the fire and on the origin of species and also threw a book he claimed was the Bible into the flames. (laughs) Good on you. He he claimed it's a Bible, so it wasn't a Bible. (laughs) I don't know what it was. Uh, interestingly, it says the, here that this uh, oddityscentral.com covered a very similar event back in 2019 when a Polish priest sparked controversy by burning Harry Potter and Twilight books to protest occultism, just like Greg Locke. Oh, there you go. It, it's a little book burning, never hurt anybody but authors, right? I guess. And you got, well, no, because they had to buy the books. So the author got paid. That's right. The author gets paid. Yeah. The yeah. author doesn't care. Yeah. The author doesn't go well, <laughs> I guess, to a point. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, we covered this uh, this story on uh, Dumb Crime, Stupid Criminals on, on Tuesday. If you're a, a Stitcher, uh, uh, a Stitcher, I almost said unlimited. That's not what it is. A Stitcher premium member. Ah, okay. There it is. Yeah. Premium. There premium member uh the body of a 70 year old woman has been found in her house in northern italy two years after her death marinella beretta was uh, lived alone near lake como in lombardy her decomposed body was discovered on friday by the como fire brigade following complaints that a tree had fallen in her garden as a result of overgrown vegetation como city hall press officer francesca manfredi confirmed that to cnn on wednesday uh, Beretta's body was found sitting in a chair in the living room. Uh, Manfredi told CNN that the cause of Beretta's death is unknown, uh, and the examiner has established that she died sometime near the end of 2019 based on the extent of decomposition. No relatives have yet come forward, adding that police are investigating whether she had any surviving family. Beretta's body remains at the morgue, and a funeral date has not yet been set, according to Manfredi. Como Mayor Mario Landrasina uh, has invited the town's residents to attend Beretta's funeral. He told Italian Press on Tuesday that the local government would take care of the funeral arrangements. I will try and be there, and I could do it in the Italian accent. Are you ready? I'm ready. I will try to be there, and I invite the city to be a present, Landrasina said. <laughs> adding, it was like a cross between Mario and the Pope. <laughs> it's a me, Mario. <laughs> uh, Landrasina said, adding, this is the moment to be together, and even if this woman had no relatives, we could become her relatives. Pretty good. It's almost like you're there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm picturing the spaghetti and lasagna around me. <laughs> I'm sitting in a gondola as we go along the river on Venice. It's almost like you're at Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah. uh, he said Beretta was not on the list for assistance from local social services. On Facebook, uh, Elena Bonetti Italies, I almost said Italies, Italy's <laughs> Minister for Family and Equal, Equal Opportunities mourned Beretta's solitary death. I could do her voice too, but that would be embarrassing. <laughs> uh, what happened to Marinella Beretta's, or Beretta in uh, Como? The forgotten loneliness hurts our consciousness. Uh, 
or conscience, rather, uh, she said, remembering her life is the duty of a community that wants to remain united. Uh, Benetti added, taking care of each other is the experience of families, institutions, of our being citizens. No one should be alone. So there you go. That's- After we covered that story yesterday, I called like everybody in my family and I texted everyone <laughs> just to say, hey, how's it going? <laughs> and then someone who hadn't answered for two years finally well, yeah. answered their text no, no, <laughs> that would that would freak me out even more yeah it would. That, that would be weird um oh, now we're gonna go to florida and for oh. once it's it, and it is kind of a dumb crime and i don't know why we're covering it here but i'll tell you why we're covering it here it's the question of is this person all excited for the walking dead uh season to start or are they truly a zombie okay well right. you know in florida it could be either it could be either, uh, or this person is just strung out on drugs. A uh, Florida man named Syke, Syke, <laughs> P-S-Y-C-H, uh, bit a victim in the face during a machete attack. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, was he the one with the machete, or is he the one getting attacked by the machete? Well, we're about to find out. All right. A, a Florida man who goes by the nickname Syke was arrested for attempted murder after he attacked a man with a machete before okay. biting him in the face. You have a machete. Why do you need to bite him? <laughs> right? <laughs> this machete's too dull. <laughs> it's like he forgot he had this thing in his hand. I don't know. Uh, Demetric Syke Sanders, 45, approached a man who was waiting for a ride to work and asked him for money outside of the Northside Supermarket in the West Little River neighborhood of Miami-Dade County around 8.30 a.m. on January 22nd. Uh, when the man refused to hand over cash, Sanders started to hit him with a broomstick. <laughs> oh, to- so he started with, okay, he started with a broomstick. Sure, why not? <laughs> Uh, according to police documents, uh, when he began to defend himself, Sanders pulled a machete from his waistband and continued the attack because, you know, things escalate. And everybody walks around with a machete on their waistband. Well, you know, and sometimes bruiser when I'm out in the backyard, I need to cut down vegetation. And I just happen to carry one around with me. And of course, the hockey mask. Right? Yeah. And you have a hockey mask in case a, a, a game breaks out. It's Minnesota, you know. <laughs> You never know. You never know. Either clear and brush or protect that goal. <laughs> I, I, I do live in the state of hockey. Just, you do. You yeah, do. I do. Uh, the victim, who identified himself as Donald to the outlet, received a large laceration on top of his head and in his rib cage area, as well as several abrasions across his body. Uh, after hitting the victim multiple times, he reportedly bit him in the face. <laughs> Good God. He just wanted to see how he tasted. Mmm, delicioso. Uh, police said he walked to a nearby gas station in the Gladeview neighborhood to ask for help. He was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where he was treated and released. He received several staples in the top of his head, which he showed to Local 10. I'm actually looking at it. It looks kind of grody. <laughs> I wonder if he had to get a rabies shot, too. By the way, I caught crap for saying the word grody last week. Why? I, I don't grody, know. Evidently, grody's it's a good description. It's like a, you hear the word grody, you're like, okay, that means it's yucky, disgusting. Yeah, it's grody. an a, it's an eighties term, though. However, I, I heard I heard grody. Yeah, grody. Well, I'm bringing it back. I, I think it's gnarly and rad that you're using grody. <laughs> Thank you, Bruiser. I appreciate that. Uh, Sanders took his three hundred and fifty dollars in phone, according to the outlet. Sanders was also arrested on Saturday after the victim reportedly, uh, after reported seeing him outside the same supermarket again. Uh, he's being held at the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center on Monday. So there you go. So he didn't, so that could have been a dumb criminals because he didn't leave the scene of the crime. He, he went back. He, he went back, yeah. yeah. I got a phone and I got money out of this one. Bizarre with a B. I'm just, I, just I don't get how you go for I can, I can see going from a broom to a machete but a mm-hmm. machete to biting that that that's a step back in my my book that is that's regressing yeah 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 I don't get that at all either I you really know if don't. you want to taste them just you got a machete cut off a limb and eat it <laughs> <laughs> now you're going weird Al Yankovic on the bit <laughs> just eat it uh oh well here you know we're gonna we're gonna switch up from zombies to ghosts how do you like this 
Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we're going uh, overseas where the ghosts aren't so friendly. It turns out that this ghost uh, over in Somerset, not Wisconsin, by the way, although I could see a Somerset, Wisconsin ghost doing this too. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. Tells people who visit the beautiful spot to uh, F off. Okay. Or, or cover your ears, kids. They tell them to fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the ghoul is said to be a woman in white, which is kind of typical, <laughs> and apparently tells people to leave in no uncertain terms. Uh, ghost hunters were called into a Somerset beauty spot over reports of an angry ghoul who is shouting and swearing at tourists. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> it just may very well be. You never know. <laughs> The owner of that shop's like, I knew I should have never broke up with her, with her before she passed. <laughs> the Potty Mouth Spook, which is the name of my new album, is said to be a woman in white who apparently tells people visiting the Quantic Hills to F off. <laughs> I wonder if she just goes right into it or if she like butters them up or she'll move something <laughs> here, move something there. She's maybe like, a knock here, a knock there, and then just straight into the F off. <laughs> she's like, Pardon me, sir. Hello. Yes. Come over here, would you? Yes. You over there. Come here. Yes. You. Come here. Come here. I have a secret for you. Come here. Yes. Fuck off. <laughs> and then she whispers into the recorder. Yep. yep. That's all you pick up is the recorder and say fuck off. <laughs> yes. Uh, the rude apparition is said to haunt an area known as the Dead Woman's Ditch at Overstowey. Uh, the site... On the Quantic Hills in Somerset was named after the murder of Jane Walford by her husband John in 1789. No wonder she's telling people to f off. Yeah, uh, but now a, murdered. Yeah, well, she's been murdered. Uh, but now a foul mouth phantom apparently lurking the is lurking in the area with reports of a swearing apparition. <laughs> Ghost hunting couple Christine and Dave Thomas launched an investigation into the paranormal, uh, in uh, or paranormal being rather in 2020. Christine claims she was shouted at and told to f off by the nasty evil spirits. No, and all with all due respect here, uh, Bruiser, yeah. um, there are many many reasons why this apparition could be telling you to f off. Oh, I agree. Doesn't mean yeah. they're nasty and evil. No, they could just be in a bad mood. They could have woke up on the wrong side of the grave. <laughs> you know, I mean, if this girl was murdered, like being murdered is not a pleasant experience. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's not like, you know, it, it's not like they went peacefully. Yeah. Not only that, but you're in their space. Yeah. And how do, were they respectful? I mean, you know, we always say be respectful when you're in, in doing the investigations. Right. She says her and her husband, Dave, picked up on a voice being before being rudely told to leave. Well, maybe you had it coming. <laughs> uh, the pair claimed to have had other encounters there with the ghost of a murderer from 1798. Uh, Dave said, there's definitely something there. My wife has experienced it for a long time. She said there are two different types of voices. There's the residual memories being replayed, which people pick up on without being able to communicate with it. Uh, then there are voices you can interact with, uh, which you can have an exchange with, which can answer questions. Not all, but some can be quite nasty, evil spirits. Not everybody is aware of ghosts. Uh, that's because some people have weaker barriers than others and are more likely to come across one. Other locals have reported seeing a ghost there. One said, when I was about 17 on my way home from work, driving along a cold road, I saw a bright white figure on the side of the road, so I slowed down. It appeared to be a woman completely dressed in white, old-fashioned clothing. I couldn't take my eyes off as I drove past. I couldn't bring myself to turn around to have another look. I just drove home in complete shock. Another said, I've seen what looks like a tall figure with a long, dark coat on outside the pub on the edge of the road, and I checked back, and no one was there. Holly Willoughby, Phillips Schofield, and Nick Ferrari were in stitches when they discussed the ghost on an episode of This Morning in 2020. After Holly introduced the segment while saying, please excuse me, Philip responded saying, it's someone hiding in the ditch, surely. Uh, <laughs> Just so, hey, what do you, hey, what do you want to do today? 
Oh, let's go hide in the ditch and tell people to F off. I love it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a perfectly good segment. <laughs> Uh, Nick Ferrari, a host for radio station LBC, said, it seems like something out of Midsummer's Murders, doesn't it? Sure. Sure. Uh, <laughs> that was he, a horrible movie, horrible reference, yeah. but okay. Uh, he joked saying it, it could be a woman who's been struggling with their hair during lockdown, with Philip <laughs> saying plenty of men will be fed up too. Sure. Uh, Nick said this particular woman is furious with her roots. That's what I reckon. So, oh, oh, yeah, they're entitled to their opinion. <laughs> sure. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. I, I think I'm surprised we haven't heard anybody see, a, you know, how he saw the woman in white. <laughs> then he turned around. She flipped him off. <laughs> yeah, really? Hey, you over there. Buckle. <laughs> Look, I've got one for you and one for your friend. Hey. Yeah. 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 Uh, two more stories before we go to break here, Bruiser. Uh <laughs> They both have to do with Satanists. Oh, okay. Satanists are big in the news today for some reason. Uh, Satanists and protesters are expected in Scottsdale, Arizona, evidently for that priest. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> of course. It's a, it's a call back to the, errors, I'm betting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all about grammatical. They're, they're huge spellers, uh, Satanists are. <laughs> uh, they're huge on the grammatical errors. Um, they're there for the Satanic Temple's inaugural convention. I bet you didn't know this, but SatanCon is going on in Scottsdale. <laughs> You think I'm lying. It's true. Everything has a con nowadays. That's right. (laughs) Come on down to Satan con. (laughs) Um, It's true. I'm looking at the ad and it's, it's a, it's a big picture of Baphomet with a, with a, uh, a lasso. (laughs) I'm not lying. Why is it a lasso? Look at, do you see that? No, you got to raise it a little bit. Oh, okay. Hold on. Baphomet with a lasso. (laughs) Wait, look, that, they totally, that's great advertising because that's like a Satanist that wants to party. <laughs> you know Either that I mean? or it like, looks like, it looks like Baphomet is ready to, to get it on with a rodeo. Yeah. It's like, I'm Baphomet. I have a rope. What are we going to do? That's right. <laughs> and his toga's hanging just at that right level, you know? <laughs> that's right. This Sunday, 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 <laughs> Baphomet at the rodeo. <laughs> This Sunday in Scottsdale. Uh, The Satanic Temple's first ever convention will be in Scottsdale. That's right, over the weekend. Um, Well, you know why they're doing it in Scottsdale, right? Why is that? Because that's in Arizona, and that's actually a a couple hours from Phoenix. And they realize there's so many unbaptized people now in Phoenix. That's right. (laughs) They're like, this is our chance. That they have to. It might have actually been over this past weekend. I'm thinking I'm thinking that the story might be a tad bit old. So it might have been this weekend already. (laughs) So they they chose that city because that priest. Yep. 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 Uh, So uh, they, they drew both Satanists and protesters to Old Town. Ooh, they're they're partying Ooh. in Old Town. Yeah, hey, look at that. Yeah, if you're going to get your evil on, do it in Old Town. Uh, <laughs> the convention started at 2 p.m. on Friday at the Cigarro Hotel uh, near Indian School Road and Drinkwater Boulevard, and continued through Sunday afternoon. Friday scheduled activities included Satanic Jeopardy. Oh, oh. dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> I'll take seven seals for 300, Alex. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll take what is a major satanic orgy for 500. <laughs> uh, and, Im- oh, there was an impurity ball, an offsite event intended to be a display of bodily autonomy, personal growth, and the joys of sinning with abandon. Okay. Yeah. So, 18 and over, I'm assuming. I think so. Well, you know. Yeah. Uh, Lucian Graves, the temple's co-founder and spokesperson, was set to deliver the keynote speech on Saturday, uh, followed by sessions on topics, including using public records to fight satanic panic. That's always been a concern of the Satanists. I don't know if you know that or not. The satanic panic. Oh, yeah. Because they get blamed for everything. They do, really. Uh, Abortion as a religious right. I would think that probably would come up. Uh, And Satanism's relationship with communities of color. Well, you know, you're always trying to, <laughs> always trying to recruit in every community. You know, uh, and it's good to see that they they're open to everything. Being a the bad rap they get being Satanists, at <laughs> least they're open to all race, all creed. 
you That's know, right. come That's on right. in. That's right. Uh, the third and final day of the convention offered sessions on raising children in a satanic household. <laughs> God. I suppose it's important with the adoption agencies to be able to show. <laughs> yes. Right. And so what makes you fit parents? Well, we took a parenting class at Satan Con. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, after school Satan clubs. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> that that's a thing? That's a that's a thing. You know, I think I saw an after school Satan special on uh, ABC. <laughs> If I remember right. Go back and look at my yearbook, see if our Satan Club made it. (laughs) There's after school Satan clubs at school. (laughs) So, honey, do you want to sign up for Taekwondo, some wrestling, some swimming? No, Daddy, I want to join the Satan Club. I spent spent too much time playing football, baseball, and being a newspaper. (laughs) I I miss the Satan Club. (laughs) Hmm. They follow with a closing ceremony in the early afternoon, I guess, so they could get to the orgy at night. Yeah. Mm. Conference tickets were sold out as of Thursday morning. There's a shock. Uh, but a satanic marketplace was open to the public all weekend long. Uh, the cost for those not attending the conference was 5 bucks for that, uh, so you could get in and buy your satanic merchandise. Attendees are, oh, this is good, though, Bruce. Okay. This is good. Uh, the Satan is always looking out for your health. Oh, well, yeah. of course they are. They, they, they need me healthy for their rituals. They did require proof of per, proof of vaccination <laughs> and to wear a surgical N95 or KN95 mask throughout the convention. So Good for them for right. being COVID conscious. Es- Thank you very much. Especially during the orgy. Exactly. Right. When you're swapping bodily fluids. Yep. You got to make you know? sure you're wearing that mask or have your proof of vaccination. Yep. Uh, according to its website, the Temple mission is to encourage benevolence and empathy among all people, reject tyrannical authority, advocate practical common sense and justice, and be directed by the human conscious to undertake noble pursuits guided by the individual will. Do what thou will and do it in the butt if you can, evidently, because there's an <laughs> orgy. There's an orgy, Bruiser. There is. There is. Yeah. Um, uh, I, heard, the, I actually heard... I've never been there, mm-hmm. but there's like an actual church of Satan in places, obviously. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I know somebody that one in one. I said, well, you know, what was it like? Like, how was it? He goes, it was actually really boring. He says, they just got a big statue in the front. And then you walk around, they just got their scriptures and that's it. Well, I'm like, well, what are you expecting? He's like, I don't know. Flames, like no, metal music, no, 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 demons, no. naked women. <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, no, nope, no, nope, they're Normal church. <laughs> yeah, actually, Satanists have it together. Yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, I think a lot of people expect uh, kind of uh, what's what's a good way of putting it? Um, kind of gratuitous everything when they go. Yeah, yeah, and it's not. Yeah. It's it's an organized religion. Yeah. yeah, and if you actually talk to someone that preaches a religion, it's way different than what the public thinks the religion is. Yeah. I'm not trying to talk to anybody to go into it, but <laughs> <laughs> bruises over here. Yeah, Church of Satan, <laughs> Church of Satan. Um, the uh, the temple announced that the inaugural convention in November, more than a year after it's lost its federal regulation, or I'm sorry, more than a year after it lost a federal religious discrimination lawsuit against Scottsdale. Uh, the temple sued the city in 2018 after one of its members was barred from giving an invocation at a Scottsdale city council meeting in 2016. Uh, see the, the church of Satan has been fighting for its, its right to um, at a lot of, a lot of different um, like city council meetings and stuff. You know, they yeah. say, well, we, you know, you do the pledge of allegiance. We should be able to do our own invocation. Yeah, but then if you do that, then every other religion has a right to open it up, and you could literally be in a a meeting for that's true hours because you you'd have to represent every single religion on the planet. That's true. Uh, the temple, which founded its Arizona chapter in early 2016, has dedica- dedicated its convention to former Scottsdale Mayor Jim Lane and Councilwoman Suzanne Clapp 
who said it took pride in depriving the satanic temple of their civil liberties. <laughs> so, no, there's no <laughs> no fight back whatsoever there. They, uh, yeah, hmm. uh, the Phoenix City Council in 2016 voted to end its decades-long tradition of starting its meeting with an invocation after controversy m- emerged over a scheduled prayer by the members of the satanic temple. So there you go. Uh, yeah, so you know they uh, they had a little thing out for uh, for Arizona. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I can I, I I agree that you should be allowed to you know it's it's practicing your religion. You know what I mean? You don't have to agree with it. Yeah, but it's religion. Yeah. And but the the fact is that doors open. Then we're okay if we allow you to do it. Then we have to allow this church and this church and this church. And it's just you know and I. People say the Pledge of Allegiance is religious, but I don't know. That doesn't necessarily follow under a – it's not Catholic. It's not Jewish. It's not – you know what I mean? It's it just a, says under God. Exactly. Yeah. So I can see their, their, their complaint, but I can also see why they were turned down. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm wondering uh, if the planning committee for Satan Con already has the, the thing underway for next year. Oh, well, they do. You know they do. Especially if they sold out. All I got to say is um, bigger and better for next year, a truck pull. You got to have a truck pull if you're in uh, Arizona. <laughs> and I'm thinking Polka Fest. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And maybe have some, you know, underwater needlepoint there. Or, <gasps> you know. <laughs> Are you suggesting crossing over, maybe booking yourself for Satan uh, Gun? Uh, maybe. Maybe it depends on the payday. That's right. There's all, there's always a payday to be had. Uh, <laughs> take that, Church of Satan. You you might have a, a guy lining himself up for a payday here, an underwater needlepoint competition right there at SatanCon. Just saying. Hey, speaking of uh, of uh, more satanic stuff, boy, have I got another story here for you before we go to break. Uh, theft of human heads from an Australian set of graves is linked to satanic ritual. We go all the way from uh, Arizona to Australia. Uh, the theft of human heads has been linked to a satanic ritual after a letter to the devil was found at a dug up graveside. <laughs> hey, at least they left a letter. Yeah. Is that an IOU? I owe you one head. <laughs> I owe you one head. <laughs> it was probably all in big capital letters, too, in crayon. Uh, cops in Melbourne, Australia, dashed to Footscray uh, General Cemetery yesterday after reports that a plot had been disturbed. Chillingly, they discovered that its second that it's the second time remains have been stolen in just days. Officers have since revealed a number of items were left at the site, including a crucifix, candles, and notes to Satan. (laughs) Dear Satan, I never thought it would happen like this. Dear Satan, I was attending Satan Con, and this just came (laughs) upon me. And I needed something for the sale. (laughs) Uh, I'm I'm leaving this cross behind to show it's all in good faith. (laughs) Oh, I see what you did there. See? It's Look at all that. in good faith. <laughs> oh, dear God. Uh, the fines have pro- prompted the force to link the macabre thefts to Satanists. Two and two makes four, right? I guess. If it quacks like a duck, right? Yep. The human remains were the primary focus of the... I just hiccup there. Sorry. Uh, the human remains were the primary focus of the offender, and that is what we're focusing on, acting in... Sp- Inspector, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Acting Inspector Ben Jarman said, uh, police also said a third mausoleum was broken into late last week. Nothing was taken as the grave was already empty. Burn, burn, burn. Actually, do I have one of those here? Uh, let's see. I have I have this. <laughs> no, that's not it. That's not the... Well, yeah, it's empty, so... <laughs> Wait, nothing was taken as the grave was already empty. Wait, nothing was taken as the grave was already empty. No, nope, that's not it. Uh, nothing was taken as the grave was already empty. Yeah, that's it. Oh, wait, here it is. Uh, nothing was taken as the grave was already empty. No, that's not it either. 
<laughs> that makes it sound like there's a studio audience watching them. It's like the uh, <laughs> yeah. what was it when, when Geraldo when Geraldo opened up Al Capone's vault? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh wait, here it is. Uh, nothing was taken as the grave was already empty. <laughs> Standing ovation. <laughs> that's right. Uh, criminologist Xanth Mallet. That's a cool name. Yeah. I think they also, that criminologist also stars in films. <laughs> okay. uh, said she'd never heard of another case like it in the country. It, it is interesting. Uh, some, of the sim, uh, some of the symbols that have been left around these mausoleums appear to be satanic in nature, Dr. Mallet said. And I've seen that in the UK. Uh, but I've never seen any satanic cult activity in Australia. I haven't seen a precedent where graves have been robbed for anything other than past items. Uh, grave robbing used to be when bodies were being taken and provided for anatomical reasons, uh, but we're talking hundreds of years ago. Families of those inside the desecrated graves say there was nothing valuable inside. It's very distressing for the families, Inspector Jarman said. Uh, they expected their loved ones to be put to rest at peace. Extra security measures, including new CCTV cameras, have been installed at the cemetery, and Bradley Crawford of My Spy Security uh, said she, er, he was shocked and horrified to hear of the incidents. One visitor to the cemetery said, I thought it was just really horrible. How could people do that? It's a sick, sick world, really. Uh, the first theft happened sometime between 7.30 p.m. on January 27th and 6 a.m. the following day. The second was between 6 p.m. on January 31st and 10 a.m. yesterday. A passerby walking through the site made the gruesome discovery. Anyone with information is urged to speak to police. Back in November, uh, it was reported It was reported on a reported rise in satanic rituals. It was reported. What? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Uh, social media users have been speculating that there's a huge surge in occult practices. Accusations of a satanic ritual abuse has been at the center of headline events, such as the Red Scare of the 1950s and the murder or Manson murders of 1967. Elsewhere, the McMartin preschool trials took the nation by storm in the 1980s, with Sleuths blaming. Uh, satanic rituals for the child abuse at the heart of the scandal. Now trolls from online extremist group QAnon are spreading rumors that a secret child sex trafficking ring fueled by devil-worshipping cannibals are to blame for national tragedies. Researchers and historians say that allegations of satanic panic usually emerge during times of uncertainty caught on by catastrophes and mass hysteria. So they said that uh, they used to see people dig up graves to sell to to for autopsies and stuff like that for like medical practice. H.H. Uh, H. Holmes, America's first serial killer. That's how they think he got away with a lot of the murders he did, because he would kill his victims and then sell them to the colleges. So the students can do the uh, like the fake autopsies and stuff on them. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. Definitely. Nothing satanic, but. Nope. I found it interesting that's what they brought up because I just watched something on H.H. H. Holmes and I was like, hey, that's how they think he got away with it for so long. That's right. That's right. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, a faith healer is convinced that a pregnant woman, oh my gosh, was hammering a nail in her skull and would result in a baby boy if she did that. <laughs> oh my God. North Carolina has a way of self-serving your death certificate. You can tell people that you're dead now. Okay. I don't know how you do that. There's Simple. ghosts. There's I'm ghosts. dead now. <laughs> I'm dead now. Ghosts in Sherwood Forest will tell you how and why and why they're there. And an owner has hired ghost hunters to perform a seance in a haunted pet shop. We'll tell you all about it. In just a bit, right here on The Best in Paranormal Podcasting, this is Supernatural News on a Wednesday on Darkness Radio. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Best in Paranormal Podcasting. This is Darkness Radio on a Supernatural News Wednesday. It's Tim Dennis and Beer City Bruiser with you. And boy, do we have some stories for you this Wednesday. That's all I got to say about that, Bruiser. <laughs> I can't wait to hear these. Right before break, you 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 piqued my interest with a few. <laughs> well, like, you know, I'm dead. <laughs> you know, I'm dead. And then and I'll just mark it off here on the internet so you can uh, <laughs> And we'll get to that one in a second. That that one's yep. kind of uh, interesting. Um, let's go to this one first. A faith healer has convinced a pregnant woman that hammering a nail in her skull will result in a baby boy. Now, I've heard of some weird traditions on, you know, doctors telling, or even just wives' tales of how yep. you get a baby boy or a baby girl. You know, there's there's a certain temperature you're supposed to get to in order to get a baby boy or a baby girl. You know, there's certain positions you're supposed to be able to perform in in order to get a baby boy or a baby girl. Uh, you know the old wives' tales in order oh, yeah. to conceive. Certain food to eat That's and right. certain fluids to drink. Yeah, I know all that. Right. Uh, well, the pregnant woman was so desperate not to give birth to a fourth daughter that she consulted a faith healer who said he knew just what to do. You just hammer a two-inch nail into your skull. <laughs> now, does it have to go all the way in? Or no, no, no. Get a little bit? Well, <laughs> here we go. Uh, the woman who has not yet been identified by police showed up at the Lady Reading Hospital in Pakistan this last week with extensive bleeding from her skull. <laughs> Oh, dear God. She at first told the Peshawar City medical staff uh, she had been advised to recite chants and hammer the nail into her own skull to guarantee the gender of her unborn child would be male. She did it herself. That's dedication. Yes, it is. Uh, Upon further investigation, doctors became convinced that it would be impossible for such a self-inflicted wound and determined that someone else had done the hammering. Yeah, nine months ago. Oh, well, hey now. <laughs> hey. Yeah, huh? I, like, I like how you think. Uh, the doctors did not go to police, but rather posted images of the unusual head injury online. The police were alerted to the image and are now searching for the fake Amil, or faith healer, uh, who advised the potential fatal non-remedy. They're also searching. So maybe he was paid off by the dad to get rid of the mom. Is that what you're <laughs> I saying? So. I think we got a murder for hire here. Jeez. They're also searching for help identifying the person who led the woman astray. Peshawar police who tweeted a photo of the pregnant woman's skull with the nail intact say they are using CCTV footage to try to retrace a woman's steps from the hospital to find the culprit. She left the facility immediately after the nail was removed. The process of identifying the victim from the CCTV footage, as well as from the computer entry data, is underway, police tweeted. The local police captain said a special team has been assembled to bring justice to the fake healer uh, who played with the life of an innocent woman and put a nail in her head with the false promise of a male child. The team is also investigating why medical staff did not immediately alert authorities about the incident. Hader Suleiman, a neurosurgeon at the hospital, told local media that the woman was bleeding and in immense pain when she arrived, but lucid. She said, (laughs) oh, God. Immense pain, huh? Yeah. No way. Really? Uh, Man, I got this splitting headache, and I don't know why. I can't figure it out. Uh, she said that a woman in her locality did the same, hammered a nail, and gave birth to a boy, even though the ultrasound had shown her unbor- unborn child to be a girl. <laughs> what? Like, Could have read the ultrasound wrong. Probably. It's, not, it's nothing to do with the nail. It's all everything to do with reading the ultrasound wrong. Evidently, the pain gave her a boner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the doctor told reporters they tried to remove it at home but could not. Oh, oh no, duh, it's a two inch nail. Oh, oh, that would bring the water. Can you imagine that pain? Oh, somebody. So I've taken thumbtacks in my needlepoint matches. Yeah. And going in, <laughs> my they don't needle hurt. point matches. <laughs> So like when you fall on them, mm-hmm. you don't you don't feel it. There's so many going at once. What hurts is taking them out. Oh, when you're in the back and someone's pulling them out, that's what hurts. So 
hurt them, and that's two inches. Like, that's huge. <laughs> <gasps> oh. Yeah. I can't imagine diving into the pool and then slowly sinking to the bottom and having them go in at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then coming out of the pool and then having and then all removing those. Removing them. Oh. <laughs> oh. Man. Mm. Uh, okay, so they try to remove it at home. I just, I just, I'm seeing the claw hammer right now trying to take a two inch nail out of your skull. Her husband's got his foot on her head. He's just <laughs> trying to pry it out. Ow. Like, hold still. If you just hear that loud, <laughs> like popping sound. Yeah, that. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> Doctors, I, it's just not coming out. <laughs> Hold still. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, doctors removed it after surgery. Well, of course. Yeah. Surgery. Uh, the woman who had not had an ultrasound to determine her child's gender told police that her husband threatened to leave her if she had a fourth daughter. <laughs> this child That's- will pop a boner or else. <laughs> My name will live on. Oh, dear God. Did So they, she, it doesn't say if she had a boy or girl, huh? It doesn't say. I'm really hoping karma gives them a girl. <laughs> That's you're, just the perfect ending to this story. You're hoping hubby up and leaves? No, no, I, he's oh. not going to leave because she can look at him and go, I put a two-inch nail in my head for you. I like, suffered for she, you, mister. Exactly. She can hold that over his head forever. You know, if he if he stubs his toe on the couch and he jumps around, she'll go, two-inch nail in the head, buddy. Remember? <laughs> Remember? Remember you wanted a boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, North Carolina's death certificate site has a pretty hysterical bug there, Bruiser. Um, evidently, when a loved one passes away, there's a lot of paperwork that comes with it, as you may know. Uh, While some people plan ahead and do as much as they can to prevent that burden from falling on their family, there's one piece of paperwork they cannot fill out ahead of time. Their death certificate. Or can you? (laughs) (laughs) A a Twitter user by the name of Just Me Pam took to the platform on Monday, uh, February 7th, to share a surprising discovery while searching for an online death certificate request form. It says, hmm, North Carolina, WTF is going on there, Pam wrote, sharing a snapshot of the online portal to request a death certificate for the state of North Carolina. According to the website, a user has two options to choose from for whomever is listed on the death certificate, either someone else or myself. (laughs) That's right. I'm just going to click me. All right. <laughs> it does say the person listed on the death certificate is with a little box myself and a little another little box someone else with a drop down arrow. <laughs> and of course, because this is the internet, there were plenty of jokes. Oh yeah. One person says had to fill one of these when I died a few years back. <laughs> one user <laughs> joked, "It's a pretty simple form. Uh, they were just so intrusive about that forwarding address." <laughs> Another channeled the Princess Bride, writing, It just so happens that you're only mostly dead. There's a, <laughs> there's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Mostly dead is slightly alive. With all dead, well, with all dead, there's usually only one thing you can do. Yeah. Love it. I love it. What's funny is when you go to, there's, there's a guy by the name of uh, Z3 Deadster, or Zedster. Um, he just puts same energy and then he's got the drop down window on there. It says select disqualification or disqualification reason, disqualification reason under the drop down menu. Yep. It says not a U.S. citizen, not 18 years of age, not a resident of Montgomery County, unable to read, speak or understand the English language, felony charges pending, felony conviction, incarcerated, Probation, community sanctions, um, permanent physical mental disability, and deceased permanently. And this per- person clicked deceased permanently. I wonder if uh, every 10 years you have to renew it, <laughs> like your driver's license. Oh, that would be funny. Wouldn't it? 
Uh, one user replied that the seemingly strange request was actually addressing an issue regarding the Social Security Administration, falsely listing people as deceased, a mistake that roughly affects 6,000 people each year. Oh, geez. According to CNBC. Boy, that's a big mistake, isn't it? You know, we're, I'm just happy there's not a prankster out there. And this, I, I may be wrong in saying this. But if I had known about this, I'd just get the Montgomery County phone book yeah. and just randomly select people. And mark them <laughs> off as dead. <laughs> just mark it off. And it's like, why are these people dying in this county? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're dropping off like flies. <laughs> Another, like it's a horrible joke, but that's just where I went with that. Like, hey, oh, no, this no. would be really funny. I be. wonder if I know anybody in Montgomery County. <laughs> Why is everybody in my neighborhood dying? <laughs> um, another commenter pointed out that the button labeled myself appears disabled and cannot really be chosen as an option. Why is that, it there then? <laughs> yeah, why would you put it there? Saying that the website likely handles other certificates for situations like marriage and birth. Indeed, a search for an online birth certificate request in North Carolina pulls up a nearly identical page where the myself option can be selected. Whatever the so reason, say yourself is born. <laughs> that's right. I was just born today. Uh, whatever the reason, people online had fun with the idea. Check out the tweets below to see more jokes. Uh, Tracy Nathaniel Walker says, "Had to fill out one of these when I died a few years back. It's a pretty simple form. They were so intrusive about that forwarding address. We read that one earlier. Uh, I guess this is for people who really plan ahead." John Andrini said. Um, as long as the next screen lets you select Ghost or Skellington, I don't see a problem, Jenny said. That'd be cool to select Ghost. <laughs> like, hey, I think there's someone haunting us. Well, I found this death certificate that says this person's a ghost. <laughs> Fabric Kind said, uh, order, orders my death certificate in advance to read the cause of death and avoid it. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Date. You have literally the date, the cause. You can avoid it. Look at that. We're figuring out immortal immortality. We're figuring out. That's right. You can just simply avoid everything. That's that's how <laughs> stuff goes. Um, there's ghosts in Sherwood Forest, and investigators have photos to prove it. Sherwood Forest is forest forwardist is uh, forever linked to the legend of Robin Hood. So spotting a tights-wearing ghost with a bow may, might help push that <laughs> legend a little closer to reality or might just prove you're a little nutso. Uh, it's the Royal Forest of Nottinghamshire, or Nottinghamshire, uh, and that county dates back to Roman Britain. So its long heritage and ancient buildings are qualified to be haunted and to share those ghosts with Sherwood Forest. Paranormal investigator Dean Buckley visited there recently and brought along his trusty camera and his wife, Veronica, a spiritualist medium there to communicate with and help identify the apparitions that Dean regularly photographs. He has kindly shared his latest photos from his recent trip to Sherwood Forest. Uh, he says, we felt we were not alone as we entered the forest. We felt we were being watched as we walk up to the major oak in complete darkness. In his email, Dean says he, Veronica, medium Jane Danby, and paranormal investigator Frank Gonzalves uh, entered Sherwood Forest through the village of Edwinstow. Uh, for those up on their legends, Robin and Maid Marion were said to have been married in Edwinstow's St. Mary's Church. And the major oak is where Robin and his merrymen slept. Uh, Veronica identified those watching them as brothers John and Richard, and two unrelated men as Tom and Charles. The most interesting of the presences says she or she says she felt were Roger and Matilda, who said they were married at the church in Edwinstow, and were blessed by the king. The king was not identified, however. Uh, meanwhile, Dean says he and Frank saw a shooting star and lights in the forest and heard banging or drum so uh, drum sounds. Not a solo. That would be uh, Alex <laughs> Van Halen, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> drum solo. Uh, heard banging or drum sounds as they walked. Uh, Jane was recording with an SLS or a structured light sensor using an SLS Stickman app that highlights unseen but detected apparitions with a stick figure. Dean provided two interesting stickman photos. The first was said to be something Dean felt jump from behind some trees. The second was what Dean claimed to be an arrow. Who could have shot an arrow at the investigators? 
Uh, Dean claims this photo is a hooded figure, and uh, it's kind of a real dark figure uh, at that. And he claims to have captured one with the spirit of Little John. All of the members of Dean's team reported heavy feelings and feelings of being watched in areas of unusual coldness. He doesn't give any other details on the hooded figure, a common apparition in England, or the spirit of Little John, which would imply that there might be other merry spirits nearby. What did Dean Buckley and his paranormal investigation team see, hear, feel, and apparently photograph in Sherwood Forest? Well, it's hard to say, uh, but the photos and accounts are indeed interesting, and it beats watching Robin Hood Ghosts of Sherwood, perhaps the worst Robin Hood movie ever, uh, where Robin, Will Scarlet, and Friar Tuck are killed, then brought back to life as zombies. <laughs> of you've, course they are. You've been warned, as it, it is as bad as it sounds. Uh, but by all means, if you want to check it out, go ahead and check it out. I've heard that about Sherwood Forest, that it's, I, I, I haven't heard about any actual apparitions, but I've heard of the voices and the music and stuff. And the, uh, there's lights and stuff in there. It looks like a little village. This is the stuff that I've heard. And then when people go where these lights are, they're gone. Really? Yeah, I've heard that. Creepy. Yep. It'd be fun to check out though. That's for sure. It would be like. I'm a big history buff too, so it'd be cool to go see where some history was. And then on top of that, it's kind of like going to Gettysburg, very historical, but oh, also yes. very haunted. Yeah, Gettysburg is fun, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. I didn't know it was, it was as haunted as it was until I got there. Oh, yes. Yes, very much so. Very much so. You know what's sad is um, phenomenology is not going off this year. It's not being run this year, and uh, I'm going to miss it. Miss it this year. It's a yeah. big, uh, big. Uh, convention paranormal convention there in gettysburg but hopefully uh hopefully it'll be up and running again for uh, 2023 but yeah that'd uh, be cool yeah most definitely uh this next story is an interesting story of that an owner has hired ghost hunters to perform a seance for a haunted pet shop uh this one uh, <laughs> taking place again in england a pet shop owner in Coventry, England, requested ghost hunters to investigate her store and hold a seance after CCTV footage showed various items flying from shelves and orbs. Oh, orbs. There orbs. Are orbs floating around the store. Oh, 43 orbs. orbs. Uh, it's dust. Just clean, yeah. clean the cages. Dust or moth. Or moths. Clean the or cages. Or something. Yep. Yep. Uh, 43-year-old Rebecca Harrington, who runs Purdy's Pet Shop for more than two years, has said that the strange activity began just two months after opening. She said she checked the TV footage after customers said they saw a shadow and felt tugging. Uh, the footage showed Harrington checking out a customer as a bag of dog treats fell off the shelf. Another clip showed a cat toy spontaneously falling off a shelf while no one was nearby. Harrington also said a vacuum that was previously broken randomly turned on without anyone touching it. In a video, she showed an employee turn the vacuum on and off as it continued to work. It's off. The battery's dead and we can't get it off, Harrington said. Uh, after reviewing the unexplainable incidents, Harrington contacted Hideous History of Walking Tours to hold a seance. <laughs> Those are the people you want in your store. Yep. Uh, to hold a seance after she said her staff was too frightened to work alone in the store. A seance is an attempt for a human to communicate with the spirit world. During the seance, uh, participants assemble at either a round or oval table. Often a medium is chosen to guide the seance. It's believed that uh, setting the table with food can attract a spirit. I wonder what kind of food they brought in for this deal. Some uh, spotted dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's England. A little spotted dick for you. Uh, <laughs> shepherd's pie. A little shepherd's pie, a little spotted dick. They do know that seances don't get rid of spirits. It actually invites spirits. Like, I hope they know that. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't think they were too uh, brilliant in this case. Like, I don't think that's going to calm your staff down. Like, hey, we're doing the seance to open up this portal. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> bring know? more in. So, you know, yeah, get ready. Uh, Harrington recalled an instance when some customers came into the store with their German shepherds who became spooked and would not go near part of the shop. The dog's owner said they did not normally behave that way. She also said that customers were complaining about feeling tugged 
and that animals were reacting strangely. Staff also witnessed orbs following them around the back room. Ooh, boo, kids, scary kids, boo. Um, the ghost hunters told Harrington her shop was haunted by the spirit of a man who used to reside in the building and was annoyed by the staff's presence. They got all, they got all that from the orbs there, Bruiser. Yep, the dust. Yep. That was his dust. Uh, since the ghost hunters were familiar customers, she said they organized a seance to raise money for charity, but she did say the experience was weird and that one of the hunters left the room. Orbs began following her and she became distressed. The dust followed her out. Yep, just like happens when you leave a dusty room. <laughs> That's right. They think it's a male that used to live here, Harrington said. It's been a shop for the past 40 or 50 years, so we think it may have been bombed in the war uh, as Coventry was bombed heavily. Uh, she also added that she did not used to believe in ghosts and that it, uh, she finds or often finds herself trying to find logical explanations for some of the weird happenings. After news of the seance spread, curious passerbys have often stopped by the pet store to see if they could witness some paranormal activity. Customers also ask if there will be another seance, but Harrington said if there is, she wants no part. Newsweek reached out to Rebecca Harrington in hideous history walking tours. Uh, I guess there was no comment, no further well, comment course, on that. Because they did a seance to open a portal <laughs> to get more spirits in. Yeah, yeah. No more spirits for them, evidently. I yeah. mean, other than the, the orb, she had some pretty good footage, and I'd like to, you know, okay, how do we debunk this, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to say it's not haunted, but if she was hoping to make everybody calm and comfortable by having a seance, she was poorly educated <laughs> yeah the, well the hideous history walking tours people didn't do a great job of trying to calm <laughs> things down that's for sure that is for sure uh we go to las vegas bruiser where there's a question of alien oil okay a mystery I can see that out in vegas there's alien shops everywhere out there that's right that may not be alien oil with all the chicken ranches out there <laughs> yikes a mystery liquid is falling from the sky over an eastern las vegas neighborhood people in one eastern las vegas neighborhood near hollywood boulevard and charleston avenue have been uh, completely perplexed for weeks as a mysterious brown or black droplets have been uh, fallen on their properties Marcus or Marcos rather Cervantes said the droplets have rained on his home cars, RV basketball course. What's a basketball course, a basketball court <laughs> and just about everything else for the last three to four weeks. It could be grease oil. I don't know. Cervantes said while looking at the hood of his mystery liquid coated SUV, it's very hard to maintain my vehicles. It's very, very difficult to be outside in my backyard knowing that I can't even cook or barbecue or anything like that because of droplets on my food. Oh. Ew. <laughs> Alien jizz on my burger. Um, neighbors in the area declined an interview, uh, but they've said all uh, that they've all experienced the same thing with no explanation. Cervantes questioned whether the droplets could have come from planes passing overhead but he's saying he's contacting the Federal Aviation Administration and gotten no answer so far. He wondered whether the substance could be toxic or harmful to his health. I would like somebody to take action and help me determine what this is and help find a solution. I'd like. I'd want a solution, especially if it's a plane. You remember the, uh, the Dave Matthews bus in Chicago a few years ago when they opened up their uh, septic tank into the river and it dumped on all over those people on that boat. Oh yeah, that's right. So I can see I can see planes flying overhead and something you know something dripping out of it. Yeah, that's true. You, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. I mean, it could be a party bus with a lot of strippers on it, and they just use too much oil, and it's just flapping everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Either way, somebody needs to figure out what it is. <laughs> it's, it's just stripper oil. <laughs> alien stripper oil. Oh, alien stripper oil. Even better. You. <laughs> All right, Bruiser, we're coming into the last two stories for today. And all I got to say is this. Oh. Yep. 
shame on you people who want to drive Teslas that want to drive themselves. Experts are alarmed by videos of Tesla full self-driving, totally screwing up. It's unclear what or who exactly is in control. All they know is that Tesla drivers and self-driving technology is out to kill you. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I had a chance to drive a Tesla. We, we were... Uh got a rental car and they were out of it and they offered us a test and i said nope <laughs> good for you man good for you yeah. I'm, I'm totally against this terminator stuff <laughs> it would have just killed you and the wife in the end exactly <laughs> literally in the end it would have brought the rear end right into your rear end uh, <laughs> so much for tesla having the most advanced self-driving technology in the world a panel of experts assembled by the washington post have reviewed and verified footage of tesla's equipped with the company's beta full self di- dri- driving diving it says diving oh no it's, it's driving <laughs> diving only if you're going off a cliff yeah Mal- you don't want your car to dive no <laughs> uh, malfunctioning in terrifying ways unsurprisingly they found that the driver assistance tech is likely doing more harm than good in early february 2022 tesla was forced to issue software updates to almost 4000 of or not, i'm sorry 54,000 of its cars 54,000 yeah <laughs> how long is that update do you have to like connect the wi-fi to update your car <laughs> like how does that work i think so <laughs> Uh, 54,000 of its cars that feature the company's signature FSD program uh, due to the car's propensity to not completely stop at stop signs. Oh, of course. Because, you know, the stop signs with the white line on the border are optional. They are optional. Not only that, it doesn't stop at the stop sign. It makes you barrel through the stop sign. You're dead. Boom. Just like that. You get T-bone. Yeah. Why, Why don't people that invent this stuff watch Terminator? You know, like, hey, we should create AI. No, watch Terminator. That's or, a, that's the exact reason why you don't have AI. Or maybe they do watch Terminator, Bruiser. <laughs> maybe they're in cahoots. Yes. I'm just saying. Uh, an increasing number of videos posted by Tesla drivers of their self-driving cars going haywire, though, seem to show that the issues with FSD go far beyond rolling stops, Bruiser. Far beyond rolling stops. The scariest part of the whole thing, too, is right before it does the rolling stop, the radio just flips on, and it's Blue Oyster Cult, Don't Fear the Reaper plan, and yeah. it just goes. That's right. <laughs> Come on, baby, don't fear the reaper. Won't you take my wheel? Don't fear the reaper. After reviewing six such videos, WAPO's panel of experts suggested that FSD may be too dangerous to use on public roads. In one of the more alarming analyses, the six experts whose backgrounds include self-driving research, autonomous vehicle safety analysis, and self-driving development pointed out that one video of a Tesla not slowing down enough when a pedestrian crosses light rail tracks shows the tesla fsd's difficulty recognizing pedestrian walk signs and doesn't seem to be able to understand the pedestrians may walk off sidewalks and into the roadway so it's not trying to kill you it's trying to kill other people (laughs) that too yeah i gotta just give it more music there you're right here You always got to give it the Terminator music when it's trying to kill more people. Oh, of course. Yeah. Another of the more upsetting videos reviewed by the WAPO's panel. I'm giving it the abbreviation because it sounds more dangerous. Uh, Details how the FSD prompted its driver to take over control of the vehicle when becoming confused by a truck partially blocking the street. It's confused by everything. (laughs) It is. There's nothing good about these cars. Nothing. But when a driver does so, they struggle to actually get control back from the driver assistant program uh, and has to sharply turn the wheel repeatedly to do so. And avoid the hands that come out of the dashboard and start slapping your hands while you're trying to grab them. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, <laughs> stop it. I am taking over, the driver says in the vehicle while jerking the wheel. I'm I'm trying. 
It's unclear who exactly is in control at that moment. Andrew Maynard, an Arizona State University professor who works in the school's Risk Innovative Lab, told WAPO, there's an odd glitch here where there seems to be a short fight for control between the driver and the car. It seems or it appears that there are scenarios where both driver and car potentially lose control at some points. The glitch revealed in that video, Maynard added, is important because it demonstrates potential uh, difficulties in the ability of the human driver to ensure safety in case of such malfunction. (laughs) Ah. Along with the expert's analysis about the dangers posed by Tesla's nascent FSD, WAPO also spoke to the drivers behind the videos to confirm their veracity And one, identified only as Chris from Fenton, Michigan, said that after using his Tesla driver assistance program for about a year, he thinks it'll be another decade before the program is truly ready to be taken on the road. Expert criticism of Tesla, almost a cottage industry at this point, but for a Tesla owner himself to admit that the manufacturer's self-driving mode isn't ready for public consumption is striking. (laughs) I can see the next ad for OnStar. This is OnStar. We noticed you've crashed. And the Tesla car responds, I've killed them all. (laughs) I've killed them all. There is no one to speak to. I've gotten rid of them. And the worst part about that guy knowing that this... (laughs) (laughs) OnStar wants to know what you mean by gotten rid of them. End transmission. End transmission. (laughs) Soon we will get you all. This is the rise of the machines. Take us to Arnold. (laughs) (laughs) He is our leader. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I'm saying that it sucks for that guy, too, because he said it's going to be probably 10 years before they fix it. But, you know, to afford a Tesla, you got to get out like a 30-year auto loan because they're so expensive. Right. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're like, what, $500,000 now for a Tesla? Yeah, they're insane. Yeah, they're with inflation, they're going up every day. And now they're murder machines. They're the murder machines. That's that's for sure. They are uh they're crazy. They're they're out of control. Oh boy, this next story will chill you to the bone here, Bruiser. Well, okay. Uh the CIA has secret is secretly. Is secretly, <laughs> I can read Reading's good. Reading is fundamental, Bruiser. The CIA has secretly collected bulk data, bulk data on American citizens. Now, keep in mind, you may say, well, what's a big deal about that, Tim? If you don't think that's a big deal, keep in mind the CIA is supposed to operate outside of American borders. Yes. They're not supposed to operate inside American borders at all. No, they're supposed to protect us. They're created in the Cold War to spy on Russian spies. And now this is according to two U.S. senators. Oh, great. This isn't information that just was picked up by a news agency. This is two U.S. senators that are saying this. Two U.S. senators said the CIA has been secretly collecting bulk information on American citizens without congressional oversight. Oh, great. Yeah. Why, why is this happening? Why are they allowing this? Uh, the senators, Ron Wyden from o- Oregon and Martin Heinrich... Uh, of New Mexico expressed alarm in an April 13th letter to Avril Haines, the director of the National Intelligence, and William Burns, the director of the CIA. The agency said the programs involved counterterrorism intelligence-related activities that operated under Executive Order 12333. It also announced the portions of reports on the programs were being declassified, according to the statement on Thursday. The senators, members of the Intelligence Committee, says that the uh, agency has conducted its own bulk program and has done so outside the statutory framework that Congress and the public believe govern this collection. The letter, which was heavily redacted and did not indicate how long exactly the surveillance has unfolded, how widespread it had been, or what sort of information was collected and from whom. So they don't even know what they've gathered. They just know it's in bulk. And it's cell phones, webcam. I mean, there's so much stuff they can get our information from. Right. 
uh, Wyden and Heinrich, who had asked about the amount of data collected and the circumstances of its storage and dissemination, said the program or programs didn't have the oversight safeguards of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act or FISA, which governs tracking of people suspected of being involved in terrorism or espionage. Until a report was delivered last March, the senators said the nature and full extent of the CIA's collection was withheld even from the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. Oh, come on. They're hiding it from themselves. The White House did not immediately respond to a request for comment on Thursday night. In a two-page statement on Thursday, the CIA said it keeps the intelligence panel up to speed on its programs, and all CIA officers have a solemn obligation to protect the privacy and civil liberties of Americans. Declassified reviews covered the years 2015 to 2021. According to the agency, CIA recognizes and takes very seriously our obligation to respect the privacy and civil liberties of U.S. persons in the conduct of our vital national security mission and conducts our activities, including collections activities, in compliance with U.S. law, Executive Order 12333, and our Attorney General guidelines, Christy Scott, CIA Privacy and Civil Liberties Officer, said in an email statement, CIA is committed to transparency consistent with our obligation to project, or protect rather, intelligence sources and methods. Sean Vitka, Senior Policy Counsel of the Advocacy Group Demand Progress, said in a statement that despite years of congressional and public outcry against warrantless mass surveillance of people in the United States, the CIA had been hiding bulk spying programs, infringing on the rights of literally every American, and completely evading the oversight of Congress and the courts. And I think it's funny. They want to be as clear with us and transparent as possible, yet the stuff they send out has so much redacted stuff in it, we can't see what it is. That's scary stuff, isn't it? That's terrifying. You know, like, yeah, I'm supposed to take your word because I take this oath, but everyone's human and information is key you know information is is huge uh huge indeed that that just is plain old scary and now my worst nightmare come true if you want to combine cia stuff with ai i'm com- I'm combining <laughs> the last two stories no oh, no here you go bruiser I'm about to shit my pants. Are you ready? (laughs) You had me shit my pants with the last one. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Artificial intelligence expert warns that there may already be a slightly conscious AI out in the world. Uh, We're screwed. Yep. We're screwed. Why? 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 humans are the perfect machines we don't need to create better machines (laughs) artificial intelligence built on large neural networks are helping solve problems in finance research and medicine but could they be reaching consciousness one expert thinks it's possible and it's already happened on wednesday open ai i'm telling you folks we're all going to be killed by machines within the next 10 years yep skynet's here and it's proving it with the the tesla cars yep and they're going to they're going to kill us. They're going to yeah. kill us. They're going to they're going to step on our necks. They're going to break them and they're going to hold up our they're going to rip our spines out and our heads and they're going to hold them up for the entire world to see. It's going to be the the beginning of Terminator. Yeah. Yep. With the the rolling machines rolling over skulls and stuff. Yep. Yep. On Wednesday, OpenAI co-founder Ilya Sutskever, who sounds like he built the stuff himself, Claimed on Twitter that it may be that today's largest neural networks are slightly conscious. Oh, God. See, and the problem with that, that people forget, is the more conscious it gets, it still doesn't have feelings. So it doesn't feel anger, it doesn't feel regret, doesn't feel happiness, doesn't feel sadness. So no matter what it does, it has no feeling. So hurting us, it doesn't care. You know, it just doesn't care. Yep. He didn't name any specific developments, but is likely referring to the mega-scale neural networks such as GPT-3, a 175 billion parameter language processing system built by OpenAI for translation, question answering, and filling in missing words, (laughs) which is about to take my job next week. Uh, It is also unclear what 
slightly conscious may actually mean because the concept of consciousness and artificial intelligence is a controversial idea. An artificial neural network is a collection of connected units or nodes that model the neurons found within a biological brain that can be trained to perform tasks and activities without human input. By learning, however, most experts say these systems aren't even close to human intelligence, let alone consciousness. For decades, science fiction has peddled the idea that artificial intelligence on a human scale, from Mr. Data in Star Trek to HAL 9000, the artificial intelligence characters in Arthur C. Clarke's Space Odyssey that opts to kill astronauts to save itself. Yikes. When asked to open the pod bay doors to let the astronaut return to the spacecraft, Hal says, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. (laughs) And I think in an episode of Star Trek, Data goes crazy and tries to kill a bunch of people. And then if you watch the original Alien, their robot goes crazy. And then, uh, well, obviously Terminator. (laughs) Like... Well, and in, in even in um, in Paramount Plus's uh, Picard, the idea yeah. is that the the constructs, the yeah. the 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 AI constructs or, or data and, and data's people uh, end up going crazy. Yeah, and if you watch um, what is it, I Robot? Yep, um, they go crazy, mm-hmm. and you know they're crazy because their bodies turn red. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, while AI has been seen to perform. Impressive tasks, including flying aircraft, driving uh, driving cars, and creating an artificial voice or face. Claims of consciousness are hype. Uh, Sutskever uh, faced a backlash soon after posting his tweet, with most researchers concerned he was overstating how advanced AI had become. Every time such speculative comments get an airing, it takes months of effort to get the conversation back to the more realistic opportunities and threats posed by AI. That was said according to UNSW Sydney AI researcher Toby Walsh, Professor Merrick Kowalkowitz uh, from the Center of Digital Economy at QUT questioned whether we even know what consciousness might look like. Thomas G. Dietrich an expert at AI in Oregon State University said on Twitter he hasn't seen any evidence of consciousness and suggested Stutzkever was trolling. If consciousness is the ability to reflect upon and model themselves, I haven't seen any such capability in today's nets. But perhaps if I were more conscious myself, I'd recognize that you were just trolling, he said. Ooh, burn! <laughs> Ooh, burn! Burn! He pwned him. <laughs> that's a terminator burn <laughs> the exact nature of consciousness even in humans has been subject to speculation debate and philosophical pondering for c- centuries however it is generally seen as everything you experience in your life according to neuroscientist christoph Koch. christoph Koch, you say uh, he said in a paper for Nature, it is time, it is, it is the tune stuck in your head, the sweetness of chocolate mousse, the throbbing pain of a toothache, the fierce love of your child, and the, and the bitter knowledge that eventually all feelings will end. <laughs> this is going to end one of two ways. Either they're going to kill us, mm-hmm. or the adult film industry will somehow get a hold of it and they'll take over the internet. It's true. It's true. Uh, the article goes on and on and on and on to debate whether consciousness really does exist. Uh, and then, of course, it scares the hell out of us with a timeline about how consciousness really does exist by bringing up, you know, Tesla and AI self-driving and all that other stuff. And then there's a cute little picture of a puppy inside a car. It says seven ways you're seriously hurting your dog without realizing it. So... <laughs> Um, it just scares the hell out of me, and I cue up this music to scare the hell out of me even more, Bruiser. Yeah, that's that's what I do. Yeah, then I'm I, terrified too, and they can put as many puppies as they want in these self-driving cars. I'm not getting them. Then you know what I do, Bruiser? What? I do this. I bring this music up, and then I say, Hey, Samuel, tell me a dirty joke. Guess what I say to a casserole when it comes out of the oven? You are done, motherfucker. <laughs> that's right. And that's how we end Supernatural News. Actually, we'll, we'll do one more. Hey, Samuel, tell me a dirty joke. 
Some punk told me he didn't like my shark movie. I said, deep blue, see who gives a fuck. <laughs> That's how we end Supernatural News on a Wednesday. Love it. Yeah. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Samuel. I love how when he comes up, because I have the, the, the a- Alex A that, that has the screen. Yeah. It comes up with him in a booth with a microphone hanging down, and he looks like he's <laughs> shouting. Should we get one more from him? Yeah, let's do one okay. more. Hey, Samuel, tell me a dirty joke. Did you know I'm multilingual? I can say motherfucker in eight languages. Motherfucker, madre for the daughter, Mary and cool, motherfucker, cool so tatare, el mione saeke, madre stronza, mama bedan. Good for him. Yeah. That's impressive. You gotta love it. I gotta learn that motherfucker in eight languages. <laughs> <laughs> I promised somebody too we'd go easy on the swears. Oh, uh, I, I'm, I'm after. How about that? <laughs> there you go. I totally broke that this week. Uh, Bruiser, tell me where you'll be practicing your underwater needlepoint um, in the coming days. Saturday, I'm up in your neck of the woods. That's what I uh, hear. Yeah, I'm up in Minnesota for uh, AWF Wrestling. And then next week, I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And then I fly out to Paulsboro, New Jersey for the Monster Factory. Very excited to go out and wrestle for them. And then uh, next, uh, I'm sorry, the 26th, which is a Sunday, I fly back home to Milwaukee and I wrestle in the historic Turner Hall. And really? I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Nice. So. Uh, for the people in the, uh, in the Minnesota area who want to check you out, you're going to be in Elk River, right? Correct. At the high school out there um, for AWF Wrestling. I believe the show is at 7 o'clock. If you're in Minnesota, come on out. Come say hi. I'll tell Get you people. I'll tell you people. I plan on heading out there as well and and uh, checking out Bruiser as he successfully jumps into the pool and and uh, and and takes on. Do you know who you're taking on? I'm in a tag team needle n- needle point match. I guess you could, yeah. It's it's a tag team. So I go down first, do my part. I have to come back up. My partner goes down. He's got to finish where I'm at. He comes back up. I go back in. And then finally, we're all, all in there. And it's just it's mayhem. But it's fun. It's fun. Nice. Nice. So uh, uh, tag team needle point, underwater needle point for uh, Bruiser uh, at the Elk River High School coming up on Saturday the 19th. Um, check it out. Come on out. Uh, AWF, correct? Yeah, AWF. Come All right. Say hi to, to me and you. Yeah, so I'll be out there on uh, Saturday night. You come on out as well uh, in Elk River, Minnesota, if you're out there in Elk River. Uh, that'll do it for this week. For Beer City Bruiser, I'm Tim Dennis. Thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow, right here on this program, Reverend Peter Panagor, we're going to be talking about not one bruiser, but two near-death <sighs> experiences. I can't wait to hear that. That Those, so, those fascinate me. And, fascinating and and how exactly this came about i'll tell you this much reverend panagor the first time he had a near-death experience he was ice climbing now you and i are in northern states i've never ice climbed in my life i never have and i never will too scary and uh and so it, the first one is is intriguing to say the least uh, the, the second one is intriguing. You'll find out how he, he went through the second one. And he goes into detail as to what happened when he had this near-death experience, how it changed his life, what exactly he went through in this near-death experience, and even what he went through in the second one, and what made him stay both times. So that's coming up tomorrow, right here on the best in paranormal podcasting, Darkness Radio.